Now, I wanted to ask you um, some more questions about your mother because we came across in the letters um, like references to her work during World War One with mm -hmm. the Liberty Loans and that I type have some of thing. old clippings on that. Of, uh, she got them. Uh, she served on the Mint Committee. Mm hmm. I have a newspaper clipping on that. She I, went, when she went to Philadelphia? Yeah. I think I saw that. Mm -hmm. that. That was in the collection. And then I had a coin. I've given it to one of my children. I can't remember which one. That uh, acknowledged her work in the, in the Mint thing. And I think it was made of tin. It was real in an awful condition. It looked real rusty, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of being made of silver, they uh -huh. were saving it. <laughs> Saving metal, I guess. Um, one of my children has it. It just sort of acknowledged it. And you said that during the war that um, you and your sister Mary would knit. Yeah, well, you saw those pictures last night. So was that at your mother's instigation? No, that was the school. Uh -huh. mm, that was everybody was doing it at school. But was there a feeling that that? since your mother was real active in the war work and that type of thing, that, that you sort of had an obligation to, to do those kinds of things? I mean, did you get that sense well, from Well, you probably her? used it as a model, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was, and then um, she was, um, she and some other ladies, including Mrs. Plumley, who was Aurelia Spall's mother. Mm -hmm. and, well, there was a woman's club, mm -hmm. and uh, they started the Junior League there. And it started by <coughs> it started by um, them having a rummage sale down um, just about where the Wachovia building is now. It was the railroad. It was a little bit on that opposite street. Um, if you if you go from the oh, the town hall mm -hmm. to the right of the Wachovia building, that street mm -hmm. went right straight down to the railroad station in Winston. That's before then and later it moved on out toward um, so, um, toward the hospital out there, toward um, the Reynolds Hospital, mm -hmm. way out on, what do we call that, East East Winston? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at this time, it was um, everybody went through their attics and got out all the clothes and then they, uh, you know, all the old union suits and everything <laughs> like that. So I'm amazed we had as much left as we did in our <laughs> attic, but I suppose from Actually, what we had left was from then on, mm -hmm. rather than from earlier. And uh, they sold them, you know, and made enough money to get the Junior League started and, and get them interested in doing charitable work. Mm -hmm. Do you remember anything about your mother's work with the YWCA? She was... I, I don't really. No, I, I wouldn't have remembered that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we learned to swim down there. So we used it. Mm -hmm. That's where we went for swimming lessons. And um, I've kind of forgotten where that was, but it seems to me it was located um, on Main Street going down to Salem. Well, now, let's, shall we look and... Okay. Can uh, there were, um, well, can I ask you some more sure, questions sure, about sure, your sure. father before mm -hmm. we go on? I was wondering, um, since he was um, a young boy at the time of the Civil War, did he ever tell you any stories dating from the Civil War era? Or? Well, I think that they, um, see, he was just under age mm -hmm. because Uncle Abram was, he was really young too. He was 16 when he went, but, mm -hmm. and the um, Union soldiers did come by there, by the old homestead. And what they did was they sent my father and, um, one of the other boys, I guess it was, must have been Harbor, up the up the mountain, no business mountain, with all the all the animals you see, oh. and they went and they hid up there while the Union soldiers were in, so they couldn't get the mules or their cows or whatever they had, and they too, and they were under, well, they would have been fifteen, was it? Would be. Yes, we're a little bit um, uncertain of my father's age, because there was one time when he changed. He um, when when they he, they were getting the passport to go to Europe. Uh, Zach Smith has this. Uh, he's looked into this a little bit. Uh, the application for the passport at first said one age, 
he was born in such and such a year. And then he went through and he, um, he turned out to be younger. Zach's theory is that he didn't want to be, uh, he was really younger than he said he was. But when it came right down to swearing that he was telling the truth, he couldn't bring himself to tell the lie, do you see? <laughs> uh -huh. So he did change it. Now, whether he is, was born in 1850, or not, I don't know which one is the lie. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether he was born in 1851 and said he was born in 1850 or not. Uh -huh. But um, there's a little bit of a wondering. We, we say 1850, because mm -hmm. I think that's on his tombstone. Mm -hmm. And it, what's the year anyway? Right. But, um, but what got me on that now? Oh, he, his age during the Civil War. Oh, yeah. So he was, well, at the end of the war was 64, wasn't mm -hmm. he? So he was just 14, approximately. Mm -hmm. And that meant his younger brother was, the two boys were in charge mm -hmm. of that. And then, um, I remember, oh, yes, this was, I remember this story. Then the, um, the soldiers came in and they were sort of housed and there was a general store on the place. Uh, Grandpa ran a sort of a, well you know how they sold a little, little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. they, anything that, pins and needles or, or manure or just anything. Mm -hmm. And because uh, you only had calico and so buttons and, and they uh, took that over for sleeping. And I don't know how long they stayed, but the, the, the thing was that they were ate, they ate everything in sight. And um, when they finally pulled out, um, they were all wondering what they were going to do, and the dog went out and dug up a ham that he had buried. <laughs> so they all lived on the dog's <laughs> ham. <laughs> Mighty intelligent dog. <laughs> Well, but maybe the dog blood. was getting hungry, you see, <laughs> yeah. and went to get his old bones that he buried. And of course, those southern hands, it wouldn't hurt him to bury him for a little while. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I think they had buried the silver, because they had some silver left. And they didn't actually destroy the house. Mm -hmm. And later, when we were, um, we did tear down that general store for Frank Horton. Didn't think it was really old enough, but it was... Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know whether it dated back to the Civil War or not. I think it probably what we, we found left was, was mm -hmm. later. But they had some beautiful old boards in there, very wide boards. And uh, it, it, we went around with a, looking for everything we could find, and we found some old Union buttons. Is that right? Uh -huh. uh, which I left up on the, I left up there. They've got them at the, in the exhibits, I think you'll come across one. And I don't think they stay long, but you know, you read the diary. I mm -hmm. thought Uncle Abram's story with what was going on at that time was very interesting. Mm -hmm. But because he wasn't actually at home, but they were just up there and they just had to survive. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me a little bit about um, your uncles and your aunts on your father's side, what you remember mm -hmm. about them? We were talking about them a little bit last mm -hmm. night as we went through the pictures. Well, because there was Uncle Bill and Aunt Kate right next door, and Aunt Kate was, um, uh, she was a very fine person. She was a D.A.R. character, right? And she was. She mm -hmm. was a member of Daughters of the American Revolution, and she, you know, she had this kind of a wonderful posture, you know. I always ever think of her a hat. I've got a good picture of her with a hat on. And, uh, but she spoiled all the children in the neighborhood. She had no children of her own. But she spoiled them in a way that they, uh, we usually ran from them. <laughs> we didn't want to be, but honestly, they, they, what they did was whoever was her favorite got picked on by the rest of us, and we got, he got teased, you know. And always the youngest one was the favorite. And so um, I expect I was the favorite until my brother came along, mm -hmm. Brother Smith, and he was definitely her favorite, and she called him Sweetie boy, sweetie boy. Well, of course we. <laughs> and it, it was fighting made him fighting mad for us to tease him out that subject. But they would order. A, she'd order a barrel of, of, of pretzels. I remember. And the barrel would be about this tall, and we could help ourselves on the back porch anytime we wanted a pretzel. We could go and get some and get one. 
And of course, I remember that I was the one fell in head first and I had to be yanked up on my feet. My brother said he was the one. So we remember somebody falling in head first and we all claim the honor of having been that one. And um, another thing they used to order, that this doesn't go into Aunt Kate, we used to order a barrel of oysters from Baltimore. Mm. And um, we fed them to keep them alive. We put them in a cool spot. And we wouldn't dare do that today. Well, you wouldn't think of keeping without refrigeration. Uh -huh. And they were delicious, and we're all still here to tell the tale <laughs> that we ate them. Um, now, let's see, Uncle Will. And, and of course, when they brought up the um, Lybrick children, um, I think they, they I'm, as I get the picture, they stayed. Aunt Kate was really the woman in charge. Mm -hmm. But they'd get mad at Aunt Kate, they'd come over to my father. And then my father was the one that sent them off to school, paid for their schooling mm -hmm. and things like that. And they uh, adored my father and, of course, couldn't put up with Aunt Kate. She was strict, a little strict with them, mm -hmm. probably. And um, so it's not fair to, to criticize her mm -hmm. for not being popular <laughs> with she was just doing her duty. Mm -hmm. And uh, now let's see, the other brothers, I, we didn't, I didn't know so well the other, uh, because you see, they didn't live in Winston. And um, I knew them later when I grew up. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, Uncle Abram, the oldest one, he moved out to Bristol. And um, they used to always come back uh, to Winston for occasions, like weddings mm -hmm. or funerals or things like that, mm -hmm. and that's when I got to know them. And within, uh, we kept up their, um, Uncle Abram's grandchildren, which uh, uh, would be our age, because our father um, married so late mm -hmm. in life. Uh, they, they, were, we, they were quite good friends of ours. Mm -hmm. And even though they lived in Louisville and um, Richmond, uh, the, the aluminum rentals, as mm -hmm. you say now. Mm -hmm. um, Uncle Will used to take us an AK, yes, this you'd like, uh, after we got 15, years old, mm -hmm. 14, 15. They'd take us with them on a trip, which was nice. Mm -hmm. And they'd take us to Louisville, Kentucky mm -hmm. to see the Derby. Mm -hmm. And I remember the time, he, he took um, five nieces, five of his nieces. And we, he got a private train and we slept aboard the train. We didn't, our families didn't have to put us up. Mm -hmm. But they did a lot of entertaining of us and introducing us to people in Louisville. Mm -hmm. and, so therefore, we got to know that side of the family very well as young people mm -hmm. could very quickly. Mm -hmm. And then they would visit us later at Renolda. And um, when they finally moved to um, uh, Kentucky, um, to Long Island, they um, bought a house in Glenville, Glen, not Glenville, um, Glencoe, Long Island. And the house they bought was the old Woolworth house. This was R.S. and Louise Reynolds, that's the mm -hmm. founder of the aluminum. Mm -hmm. And um, they moved from Kentucky and, they had, and the boys invi uh, invited on a house party ten girls and they were going to have ten boys on the party. And we were due to arrive practically before they got settled. And uh, we kept saying to Robert, now what about them? Um, um, what about the boys? What boys are you having? <laughs> oh, we can always get plenty of boys. This was a family of boys, <laughs> you see. Well, as it turned out, um, the last minute, they didn't have enough boys <laughs> to go around with the girls. The girls all accepted, and the boys didn't. <clears throat> are we on again? Mm -hmm. um, well, that was, we were talking about the house party. Mm -hmm. that, and uh, that was, so anyway, we we got the all ten girls, but the last minute they had to invite a lot of boys. And one of them was uh, Henry Bagley from Atlanta, uh -huh. whom I'd never met. <laughs> so how old were you then? Uh, well, I was 18. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, well, I must have been 19 then, because we were married um, the next January. This was mm -hmm. in June or, Ju uh, June or July. But we had a wonderful time with the... Uh, other side of the family mm -hmm. that were the same age. Mm -hmm. And now let's see, Uncle Harbor, he lived up back at the homestead, mm -hmm. and we didn't see them too often. Mm -hmm. Well, we saw Aunt, Aunt Annie was his wife. Mm 
and um, they would come down to Winston occasionally. And I remember after we were married, um, Henry, my husband, mm -hmm. had um, heard so much about Aunt Annie, who was Uncle Alba's wife, and she came to call. And we all said, don't tell her we're here, don't tell her we're here. <laughs> and we'd run upstairs and he said, I want to meet Aunt Annie. I said, all right, you go meet her. So he went down and introduced himself, and she said, see, I got all my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so he saw why we ran, you know. <laughs> and she was all right, but she was just, um, you know, we were young and she wasn't. <laughs> she wasn't. And later we went up to see her at the Reynolds Homestead. I think that's the, my first recollection of going up there. Now, whether I ever went with my mother or father, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I know they went. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how frequently, but I, among my souvenirs are some postcards from up there saying we saw Uncle uh, Harbour mm -hmm. and Aunt Annie today, and uh -huh. they were motoring through. Mm -hmm. And my lo mother just loved to motor. Just, I think I have a little picture of them motoring along, um, probably on one of those trips. Mm -hmm. And she used to take us out when I was um, just born. So I was born in February. In August, we went, we drove all the way from um, Winston up to Thousand Islands, Canada in the car. Good grief. And all the babies and bum, and mother and daddy, and the chauffeur. Because um, I was the baby, mm -hmm. so there was three children. And they carried a potty with them, <laughs> so we didn't have to stop every minute when somebody walked. One of the children wanted to go. We just did, and then out the window would go. <laughs> well, it was an open car, uh -huh. and a very comfortable one. It was a 1910 Pierce Hour, so it must have been brand new. And that's the car later. I think that's the one covered in evergreens. Mm -hmm. And later, when, and when I was in high school, we would, um, would take that car out on a football parades, it didn't go, you know, it didn't go out every day, but mm -hmm. it was put together and gotten ready for uh -huh. the football parade. I think Ms. Wise was talking about mm -hmm. that. And I, that, I wish we still had that, still kept that car. I don't know what, it, what went with, uh, where it went to. But um, with no one around for a year or two, things just, well, a few things just disappeared. Mm -hmm. They thought we didn't care about it or something mm -hmm. like that. Now you had an aunt on your father's side who lived to be real old. And aunt, aunt Lucy. Lucy. Mm -hmm. She was 95. Mm -hmm. In fact, her funeral was the same as my, my sister's. Huh. We, I was down for my sister's funeral and hers was the next day. Mm -hmm. Well, she never could, uh, she was just a lovely, she's the one I showed you last night, very oh, sweet-faced mm -hmm. one. And um, blonde and blue eyes, and the other sister was fair brunette, mm -hmm. and the other sister uh, was the um, grandparent of uh, of um, the Labrick. Mm -hmm. yeah, she married um, married uh, Judge Labrick, mm -hmm. and Aunt Lucy married a Kreitz from Kreitz, mm -hmm. and uh, she let's see her. Descendants mostly live in Winston. Mm -hmm. They are the most of the crowd. They they moved to Winston soon after they were married. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, he came into the tobacco mm -hmm, business mm -hmm. with my father, and um, they lived right down Spring Street, right down the corner, around mm -hmm. the corner, and that's where Grandma came to live with them. I mean, she got she liked the city. Mm -hmm. She got tired of that country place mm -hmm. up there, so she moved down, moved in with her daughter. Mm -hmm. That was done in those days. Mm -hmm. And nobody seemed to object in those days, well they do today, uh -huh. or they would. And uh, I think my father was a favorite of my grandmother, so mm -hmm. she could stay close by him. Aunt Lucy was the kind that she never would um, uh, admit that she never admit that she heard anything that was bad. She would ignore it. If you told her some terrible piece of gossip, um, she she was just deaf to it. She wasn't going to put up with anything <laughs> that was unpleasant in her life. 
And one time, ye, um, one time my son, when he was 10, went to camp, and he met at camp, it was Culver Camp, way out in um, near Chicago. He met a third cousin out there who was Aunt Lucy's grandson. Well, I guess he was a little, maybe he was a second cousin. I'll stop and think. Well, my son had never met him before, so there was no excuse for being best friends, but they were. They became quite close at camp. Uh -huh. It's sort of blood is thicker than water. Mm -hmm. But the two little boys decided to run away. <laughs> uh oh. And that was a great excitement for me, too. And, uh, but uh, Smith phoned me after they ran away. So I wasn't really too worried about it, you see. But I, not that I proved it, but I wasn't all that up about it. And uh, Henry, it was Henry Leinberger from Charlotte. His father was very upset over it. And um, how far did they run away? Or did they didn't go very far, but and they didn't have any money to come home. That's why he phoned me. <laughs> a couple of days was enough, <laughs> but they didn't like the camp. You know, they didn't like the strict uh -huh. military thing. And um, so anyway, um, I was visiting Aunt Lucy later, and I started to say, "Wasn't that?" I said, "Wasn't that something that?" Henry and Smith, two cousins that had never met each other, would run away together. Aunt Lucy never heard me. And as one of their daughters was going <laughs> to me, and then I called on not to tell Aunt Lucy, you see. She knew perfectly well, I'll bet you the whole thing she'd heard, but she just wasn't going to acknowledge there was anything unpleasant mm -hmm. in life. She never would listen to anything that was, that was the critical of anybody. Mm -hmm. But she loved to play the stock market. She loved to buy and sell stock. Well, most of the ladies were doing it at that time. This was just before the crash. Is that right? Oh, yes. It was, a, it was like instead of playing bridge, you played the stock market. You went down and you sat in that brokerage house and you followed how the stocks were going and you bought and you sold. And Aunt Lucy was smart. She, she was most of the time pretty, pretty on the ball about yeah. it. But um, in the end, they were caught. If it hadn't been for my Uncle Will, he he pulled them all out of the fire because they were buying on the margin. You know what that means? I'm not sure. Well, if you you don't have the money, but you you, yeah. you put up a certain amount of stock, and it it covers your first purchase, mm -hmm. and then if that stock keeps going up, it, you're fine because you don't have to put up any more. But if mm -hmm. suddenly that the price of that stock drops. Then they take all the stock that you put up in order to, unless you got more to put up. Mm -hmm. You may have put up what was equivalent to a hundred thousand dollars. We'll say just mm -hmm. to be generous about this situation, <laughs> and um, the stock may be uh, suddenly worth, uh, way down to fifty thousand. Well, you got to put up another fifty thousand, mm -hmm. and then if it goes still further than that, which is the kind of thing that was happening in, this, in that day. Uh, you have no more stock to put up, then not only you've lost the purchase, but you've lost all the stock that you were backing it mm -hmm. with. And so Uncle Will saved them from that. He, he hauled them out and said, now you get out of the market. And it wasn't just Aunt Lucy. I don't think he had to haul her out as much as he did some of the, his nieces. Mm -hmm. we, were at, we were all too young for this kind of mm -hmm. thing. We just all ears lifting. <laughs> but, um, I used to think it was very sad because, um, of course, today we um, we call adults, we call older people by their first names a lot, but they didn't then, you see. Mm -hmm. It was very formal. And um, she would say, Brother Will, and he would say, Sister Lucy. Uh -huh. It wasn't just Lucy and Will. And um, she, um, I kept thinking, well, I saw them together and late in their lives. And they were still the only, they were the only people that called each other by their first names. And I thought how sad it was for, um, to be the one left without having anybody uh -huh. call you by your, la by your first name. Uh -huh. Now, who else was? Did, now, was your Uncle Jim who you were going to tell me a story about? Yeah, but I think. On your mother's I, side? 
he, he married my mother's sister. Mm -hmm. And he was one, I think, I, in reading the thing this morning, I read where I'd said that one bow of mother's gave her chocolate, mm -hmm. and, well, Uncle Jim was the bow that gave her chocolate. <laughs> and uh, then he married her sister, and they lived across the way. Uh -huh. But he was quite a character. He was, uh, he was a very lonely person after his, his only son died, as I told you. Mm -hmm. and. Um, his wife liked to play bridge and read poetry, and I would say that's practically it. And um, he he liked the circus, he liked baseball, and he liked, uh, they just were not, they didn't gel, you mm -hmm. know, they just were completely different characters. But he knew the Ringling family, and every time they came to town, he'd uh, go out and you know, talked to all of them, he knew all the clowns, he knew the fat lady, and all of that. <laughs> so there was a while that Aunt Max and Uncle Jim were staying with us at Renolda. Uh. Um, the Lasters came after Mother mm -hmm. died, and then um, they found a chaperone. You know, you girls were not allowed to go anywhere without any. You know. It's just terrible. And she was a very, she was actually from Georgia, but she had grown up in, so to speak, uh, worked in high society families. And she was shocked that we were allowed to go to a movie with a boy. Well, this just really outdid us, you know. We were just so angry about the whole thing. So we were always at, at Daggers Point, so to speak, trying to, what we thought were our rights to do mm -hmm. things. But anyway, the last is found Miss Green, she was, and um, and she traveled with us one summer, the Lastus and the, um, their daughter, Virginia, and the Galloways went, and their two daughters, uh, Tippy mm -hmm. and Louise, and um, my sister and I, well, there were ten of us all together. Let's see, the Galloways were four, seven, eight, nine, ten, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got on the, um, the first boat we went on was the, well, I was, I, I, I'd been on the Aquatine, we'd been abroad once because when mother, um, mother had planned for us, she knew she was having this new baby, and she had planned for us to be away all summer with Bum and Ben Bernard, who was her secretary, but later married Mrs. Bowman Gray. Uh-huh. And um, there were three, uh, three uh, boys, that was my brother Smith and Dick and Ab Walker, and three girls, my sister and I and Virginia Irvin. And so when she died, um, she wanted to get us away with a new baby. She wanted mm -hmm. to concentrate on the baby uh -huh. and not have us underfoot. Uh -huh. And because uh, we were raring to go. <coughs> and uh, Bum was Dutch, so that was a great treat for Bum and so on. So we were, uh, they decided after Mother and Dad for us to go anyway, which I think was sensible. Then they would figure out what to do with us. So off we went, and on the boat, as um, my sister and I um, picked up somebody, you know, some young man, mm -hmm. we're having a wonderful time with him, and boy did Mrs. Laster, Aunt Cousin, and Nancy Laster, <laughs> oh, she was so shocked. Young ladies do not pick up boys. But we said, well, you know, but I know, but this is a boat. This is <laughs> So we got so mad because we knew it was all right. And, um, I mean, it was acceptable, but mm -hmm. she had never been abroad before. And so she didn't realize that you could make shipmate friends, you know. So we were so mad about it that we, by gum, we weren't going to be bothered with anything. We just, you know, we were going to behave, but mm -hmm. we were mad about it. And then, of course, she got on to the fact that this was not so unacceptable conduct. And her own daughter and the other Galloway girls were picking up boys <laughs> and talking to them. <laughs> so we were furious. But um, at the end of the summer, they decided, well, there had been a question. Um, my sister had graduated from um, prep school. Mm -hmm. She was ready for college, and she didn't want to go to college. She wasn't interested. And I had um, 
not had I had done um, eleven years, which is what our high school mm -hmm. was at that time. My eleventh being um, at the Rosemary mm -hmm. Hall, but I had not graduated because you see I had asked to go back a year. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd finished enough courses, but Agnes Scott had accepted me anyway. But there was a big question because I had I had four. What well, the thing was you had to have four in a language, four years in a language, and so many years of, three years of math, I mm -hmm. think, and four years of English, and two of history, and so on. Mm -hmm. I had all of those mm -hmm. things, so that was no, uh, whether I was in the 11th or 12th mm -hmm. grade, it didn't matter. I, I was ready for, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been ready for Smith or Wellesley, but I was ready for Agnes Scott. Mm -hmm. And um, my sister wanted to stay abroad. And um, she was an artist, and she wanted to take uh, art in painting in Paris. Well, of course, I wanted to stay, and I didn't want to stay. You know, was, mm -hmm. I really wanted to go to college, and I wasn't quite sure. But anyway, we left. it was up to Uncle Will as to whether we could or couldn't. And I think it was doubtful in that if they hadn't liked this woman, they wouldn't have let my sister stay, you mm -hmm. see. So Miss, um, the last has approved of her. And, um, of course, um, Cousin Ed Laster was one of our guardians, too. So um, we wired Uncle Will and asked if Nancy and Mary could stay. And I'm not sure how that telegram was worded, but I know um, he sent a, a cable back, and he addressed it to Mary, and he said, can't stay, and he didn't say a word about me. So we all assumed that I had to go to college, that he decided me to come home. So I, we came, I came home, and as I got off the boat here in New York, some cousins had come up to meet us, and they said, Well, Nancy, what are you doing uh -oh. here? You're supposed to stay in Paris. <laughs> well, I was, then I was fit to be tied, you see, because here Uncle Will was saving a dollar or two for, or maybe ten dollars for not putting in an extra word of Nancy. And I'd come all the way home. Well, um, May Lyberg. That's Lib's aunt mm -hmm. was meeting us, and but she was also heading out west to pick up some of her nephews to bring them back to stay with Lib's mother and father. And Lib was going with her to help her. And so they said, "Well, Nancy, will would you like to go with us?" They knew how disappointed I was. I said, "Sure, I'd never been out west. I'd love to." So I got off the boat in the morning and took the train with them <laughs> in the afternoon and uh, headed out to New Mexico. And in those days, it took, um, I think it was five full days and five full nights to get as far as uh, Santa Fe. Huh. And um, this cousin's ranch was in Albu uh, outside of Albuquerque. No, 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 I'm wrong. Three nights and three uh, days. And then uh, I think on to the coast, it would have been five. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that was, and I had nine days before I had to pee at college. That's what it was. So I had th six days for traveling and three days <laughs> on the ranch. <laughs> so I got back to Win I had a wonderful time. We loved it because it was um, riding, in which mm -hmm. it was my favorite sport. So um, we got back to Winston in, I don't know, morning or noon. Anyway, we, I had a, a, all afternoon. And I was due to take the train at 11 o'clock that night for, for Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, Nancy, Uncle Will thought it over, and if you want to go back, you can. Well, now by this time, I had accepted the idea I was going to college, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I just was really beside myself. And so they had arranged for somebody to go with me. It was was uh, my cousin Ed Laster's sister, who was a trained nurse at, during the war, and mm -hmm. she this was an opportunity for her to get a a paid passage back mm -hmm. to France and see the battlefields again. So I could, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I did kind of feel sorry for Mary in Paris too, by herself, mm -hmm. with Bessie Green, and we did not like particularly. <laughs> Which later I liked very much, mm -hmm. I liked her, but at this stage of the game she was against everything we thought we <laughs> ought to have, all our freedoms. So anyway, I decided to cut, I, I'd leave it to the cards. So if I got red, if I cut a red of any suit, 
I'd go to Paris. If I got a black one, I would go to, <laughs> to college. <laughs> and I cut the deuce of diamonds. <laughs> so I went back to Paris. And uh, that was the end of my scholastic career for <laughs> quite a while. So later I tried to go back to, I went back to, um, we both did, both Mary and I went to, with Miss Green, we stayed in New York in an apartment and went to Columbia Extension School, mm -hmm. which was for adults that had not had a college mm -hmm. education. But you didn't have to enter firmly like you would, uh, you could enter one or two courses, you didn't mm -hmm. have to enter a whole lot. So, and then I guess I got 11 points credit during that period. Mm -hmm. So how old were you then when you went to? Oh, that, that was, we were just, um, it was a couple of years later. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Well, we did a lot of traveling mm -hmm. then. Well, I could run through that and let's see. We came home for Christmas because we had, we always thought we ought to be home with, with our brothers at Christmas time. The mm -hmm. family ought to get together. Now, how, how old exactly were you when you went back to Paris? Oh, 17. You were 17. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, because um, I was at Rosemary uh, when Lindbergh mm -hmm. flew across the Atlantic. Uh -huh. And this would be the fall, mm -hmm. 17. And then Christmas we came home, and I met a most attractive young man who was going to Yale. And that was just great, you see, because I, I thought I was engaged to him. <laughs> And, but I wouldn't admit it. And uh, later he asked me to, he and his family asked me to come out. They lived in Denver. And uh, I wouldn't admit that I was serious about him. And Uncle Will would not permit me to go into a young man's home, no matter what kind of a family he had, unless I was engaged to him. And I still wouldn't admit it. <laughs> Well, anyway, it fell through. Where had you met him? In, in on the boat. In oh, oh, yeah, he was a pickup. <laughs> <laughs> well, he and, and my sister and I were practically the only ones that didn't get seasick on that trip. It was a very rough trip. And I expect I was on my feet because I was interested in him. You know, if mm -hmm. you're interested in something, you don't let yourself get seasick. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, I knew him over a period of triple years mm -hmm. until I married him. Mm -hmm. Somebody else. But we didn't, it, we kept seeing less and less of each other. We, it just wasn't working out mm -hmm. to, to get to know anybody better. Mm -hmm. um, so let me see, that's a, quite a digression. We're talking about how many trips are growing. Well, can I ask you first, like you came back specifically to be at home at Christmas mm -hmm. with your brothers. Was Renata would be running full staff. Uh -huh. Now, what it did, um, well, let's see. There'd be nobody staying there. John Carter would be in charge. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't... Mr. Warnkin was running the, the grounds. Mm -hmm. He was really oh, in charge for the bank, mm -hmm. the trustee. Um, I expect they didn't have a, as uh, as many help when we weren't there, but they had the, the nucleus mm -hmm. of the staff was there. And I don't believe anybody was let go particularly, but mm -hmm. maybe they took more time off or something. Mm -hmm. I really can't tell you how it was working. Where was Dick at this time? Um, I think this... Hmm. This would be... um. He was at State, well, let's see, it was State College. He went to State. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether he went more than two years, but he was there. Now, you see, if Mother died in 24, and Dick was um, 18. Mm -hmm. So he must have spent the next two years at State. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to digress again because okay. this reminds me. Um, while I was in high school, well, I took any trip I could take, you know, I mm -hmm. loved it. So I was a Girl Scout and I was also a Girl, g girl Reserve, no, Girl Guide. Well, anyway, this was Girl Reserve. Is this such an organization as Girl Reserve? It's, like a, it's like a Girl Scout, anyway, mm -hmm. some organization like that. 
and they had a convention uh, meeting in Raleigh and they assigned us to um, various homes. There might be one or two of us taken in by someone who had someone in that organization. Mm -hmm. And I was assigned to a very nice woman and she um, uh, was a seamstress. And there was another counselor there um, assigned to her too. And uh, they kept poking around trying to ask me questions and was I by any chance one of those rentals, this was when mother was alive, was I one of those uh, tobacco rentals? I said, oh no. no. And um, m mother heard about it later. Oh, the, then the woman said, but well, she felt my dress, she thought it was mighty good material, being a seamstress, she knew, you see. And I did not absolutely, and she said, well, said, we had a boy here at state. Well, Dick must have gone to state before Mother died then. Are we adding something wrong? Because he said, she said, um, we had a boy here at state, and he said he was um, a son of R.J. Reynolds, but nobody believed him. <laughs> and here they were sure I was when I said no, you see. So I couldn't pop up and say, well, that he was. <laughs> <laughs> it was my brother he was. <laughs> and I went back and Mother heard about the fact that I had denied being a Reynolds. Oh, she was so mad, oh, upset about me. I was, she thought I was ashamed of it. But it wasn't. You just didn't want to be conspicuous, mm -hmm. you know. You wanted to be treated like anybody else mm -hmm. and you didn't want to have somebody um, flattering you for, for who you were mm -hmm. and not because they liked you. So, I'll tell you what else, it was the first time I heard the radio. We didn't have a radio, and she did. And uh, it was, people were, um, it was a terrible uh, cave-in in a Kentucky cave, and they were strapped in there, they were uh, caught in there, and they couldn't mm -hmm. get them out. And it was going on all the time while I was there that they were listening oh. to this thing. And later my brothers made our first radio. They put it together themselves. Mm -hmm. But how, how, how can you kind of fit that in with them? So she died in 24 and Dick was um, Dick was um, born in 6, 1906, so. He was 18. Right? It must be 18. Maybe he had gone to state the year before, mm -hmm. at, when he was 17, because... Maybe. Because I would have gone to college, I would have been 17, mm -hmm. so... I think we skipped the 12th grade mm -hmm. in, oh, in those days. I, I don't so. think we ever had a 12th uh -huh. grade. I know there was none at the high school. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you do that at other times, too, just um, deny you were Reynolds, not because oh, yeah. you were ashamed of being a Reynolds, but that it might... Well, I tried to it. play it down. Mm -hmm. Try not to. I, I still do. I, mm -hmm. I don't like somebody to know who I am until I have to have known them for a while. Uh -huh. I got so mad because um, on a boat I was on and um, somebody was with me that knew me and they kept going around spreading it all over the boat, you see. You say you think the name of that group was... It was Girl Reserves. Girl Reserves. Mm -hmm. I was thinking it was one other trip that I particularly remember, and that was with the Girl Scouts, and that was to Savannah, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And um, they knew ahead who I was. I couldn't deny it. I know. <laughs> Somebody had told them. And, oh, I know why, because our old minister, Dr. Anderson, he had been in uh -huh. Winston-Salem, and he was the minister down there. And I was staying with somebody from his church. And I was very happy to, 
to see him. I, I admired him very much, and he was quite a sporty minister. They, he would be on a trip, and he'd tell somebody he was a minister, and they wouldn't believe him because he wore a sport jacket <laughs> instead of having a clerical collar uh -huh. or something. And he had been the, um, the minister at the First Presbyterian Church in Winston. Mm -hmm. Neil Anderson was his name, Dr. Neil Anderson. Well, then I um, was talking about the European trips. After Christmas, Miss Green and Mary and I went back to Europe again, but this time we took a Mediterranean cruise. And uh, that was great. And we went to, um, we touched at Madeira. I remember taking those. I've got some pictures of some of these things. And then we went to, and I know we touched at Algeria, and the Egypt, Egyptian trip was the most marvelous because we got, they had a, we stayed in Cairo oh, twice, I think. No, oh, that's just, don't we forget it, that's the front door. Mm -hmm. um, and we went up the Nile River in a, in a, it was a small boat, it had about 30 passengers. And it was a, tour, it was a tourist boat. Mm -hmm. And we got off and we would ride these little donkeys over to the tombs. And then they'd come back for a cup of tea. And then the next day we would ride up a little further in the river and, and up the Nile and mm -hmm. take another little joint over to the sun. And um, the donkeys were just wonderful because um, they wouldn't move at all unless you went in and out with your feet, had to keep moving. Mm -hmm. It was like you were uh, digging them with the sides of your feet. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that was just meant go. And Mary was very long-legged and she got the smallest donkey and her legs were almost touching the ground. But we went, to, that was a wonderful trip. And then we went to Jerusalem and motored up to Nazareth, all around in there, and Beirut, mm -hmm. and Damascus, and I got those, that gun and the two um, daggers in Damascus. Uh -huh. And then I bought a book, and the man, it was a book with um, lots of pictures, and beautiful pictures. I've got it, I'll show it, on, I'll show it to you. It's on the wall framed outside the dining room. And uh, the uh, book, uh, the man told me, of course I couldn't read it, said it was a love story. So that appealed to me. And I bought the book, and then I got home, I took it to the Metropolitan, asked them if they could tell me something about it. And they did, they said how much they would cost, it would cost me to have it translated. And I didn't feel like I could afford it, but um, it, um, it was the story of Polo. Oh. And I think that's much more interesting. And apparently Polo started in Persia. How about that? Uh-huh. That's what he told me. Anyway, uh -huh. I've never had it translated. And the manuscript is, um, well, I had these pictures. It was loose. It wasn't bound together. And um, so I just had it framed. And I didn't tear it up to, to frame it, mm -hmm. but it was a part. And I have kept the book in here. I'll show it to you. Okay. Cut it off a second. Something else happened later that I think will interest you. Okay. Um, we went all through that. And then we went to Greece. And we met an English... Um, we, we had a date with um, Lord Wavertree, who's uh, an elderly Englishman that I'd met on the boat, too, uh -huh. a pickup. <laughs> and his daughter and her governess. And we had a, a nice trip with them in Greece. Mm -hmm. And um, then we headed toward um, uh, Budapest and Vienna. And we were going to Prague. And we got to Vienna. We had a cable, and it just said, come home. Huh. Well, we were scared to death because we were sure something awful had happened. So... We got home, and it was all Uncle Will again saving a few dollars. So maybe he was afraid we wouldn't do it, but he had heard that um, a, a bow of Mary's was coming over there to be with us during the summer, and he was not having it. And it was a very nice family. They were Winston family, 
In fact, the father was in his in the company. But um, he told him he just said for us to come back. So we came back and absolutely trembling, you know, mm -hmm. for fear something had happened to the brothers. And of course, all John did was stay there. He didn't. <laughs> he, didn't <laughs> he didn't come to Europe. He just stayed. <laughs> And he and my sister were engaged for a little while, but it didn't work out. He was a great friend of my brother's, uh -huh. both brothers. What was his last name? Uh, Graham, no. John Graham. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he's <laughs> outfoxed, you outfoxed him anyway. By uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, we, we never got to Prague. <laughs> and uh, our idea was to use the chaperone as much as we could and stay abroad and travel mm -hmm. as much as we could. And then I always come home for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Well, the once we were home for the summer, then uh, we did stay around Winston. Mm -hmm. And that's when she was so shocked that we were going to movies with boys. It was really, the whole thing was so backwards. Everybody had to be introduced. It was all right to meet somebody on a boat, but mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't go to a movie without her chaperoning us. But can you imagine? Who going, is this? Uh, Miss Smith. Miss I mean, um, Miss Miss. Um, Miss Green, mm -hmm. Bessie Green, the chaperone. Uh -huh. So anyway, she, um, so that was, it was that fall that we went back to Columbia. Mm -hmm. So that would be um, 1918. Or 28. Oh, 28. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we had an apartment in um, the Barclay Hotel, the three of us. Mm -hmm. And we took our classes up at Columbia and then into place and all kinds of things at night. And she wanted to introduce us to high society, and we didn't like that at all. <laughs> we thought it was a stick up and <laughs> very dull group of people, we thought. <laughs> and uh, they were much too proper. They weren't nice, they were just too proper. Uh -huh. How, when you came to, um, to Connecticut for your last year of high school, were <clears throat> were you accustomed? Was were the ways of the North a lot different from the ways that you had grown up with in the South? Or well, it's, uh, the school was just so different because here I was allowed to drive my car around and and follow the football team and and um, you, I was I was free in Winston mm -hmm. and nobody was hanging over me, my shoulder like Bessie Green would have been mm -hmm. and um, up here at um, Rosemary, we were not permitted we, we uh, to come from New York out without a chaperone. And my brother brought me up after on the Christmas holiday, and I was late. I had a cold, and I was not back on time. So the others were all in school when I came up, and he brought me up to New York. And um, we got a, the train got in in the morning. I could perfectly well have gone right out to Rosemary's, what I should have done. Mm -hmm. But I sort of begged off and asked him to take me to a matinee, which he nicely did. And then, um, of course, I couldn't bear to tell him that I was supposed to have a chaperone all the way out in the train. Mm -hmm. And so I um, told him goodbye in Grand Central Station and got on the train by myself. And then we were had to wear uniforms from New York out. We didn't; they didn't care what we looked like arriving in New York. Mm -hmm. But uh, we should not have had a. I should have had a polo type coat and not a. A fur coat like I did have on, because I had no place to change. So I arrived out here at the station, unchaperoned, and um, you took a taxi, and they always put people in with you that go in your direction. Mm -hmm. So you saved taxis, even in those days. Mm -hmm. And I got in a taxi that was going out toward Rosemary, and um, who got in with me but the head ma headmistress's sister. <laughs> And so I uh, was real quiet. There was nothing I could do about it. I had on this fur coat, you see. And she got off first. And then I lived, she lived right on the grounds, but my dome was right around, and everybody was at dinner. So I quickly sneaked through the front door and went up and changed my, into my uniform and came back down and checked in. And the next day, um, they kept saying, um, who came out with you? And I said, my brother. 
and um, they were very skeptical. They were sure they didn't, but they did not make us think about it because they, um, I don't think they had any proof. Mm -hmm. You see, they, there was nothing they, and I hadn't done anything wrong really, mm -hmm. but I had broken a rule. And they had, I think, had been warned by my family that I had run, run away once and that I did not like it and maybe I was going to do it again. Mm -hmm. But they, and maybe they were justified in being suspicious of me, but it was, I found it very objectionable not to be trusted mm -hmm. when I knew I was reliable. <laughs> did, did you go into New York a lot? Not from school, I don't know. But they did, oh, they do things like they had um, opera tickets and, and you, maybe 20 of you went in on the bus and mm -hmm. well chaperoned mm -hmm. and you were high up and way up in the very high in the balcony sections. And uh, they didn't do much. They should have done more, I think. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you get busy at school. Did you... Um, Rosemary's a very fine school with high, uh, high um, um, in, um, standards. Mm -hmm. Did you ever um, visit Liv Lybrook at her school? Um, she was telling me how she, she visited me she while well, this all was, the time. Yeah, <laughs> no. She got me into trouble that time too because they were like foolish young things. Um, they w were over and they were staying. They had sent for a taxi, but they were a little bit late and out. Lights were supposed to be out, and then the taxi came, and they hid it in my closet. <laughs> And so that's why they got all excited because they thought that I was going to run away with it in the taxi. So they they grounded me good the next day, and I had invited people from there was, there was a, a place right across the street from Rosemary that we were permitted to eat at. And uh, the woman was a French woman, and she made the most delicious, yummy cakes you ever put, put in your mouth, and she, everything was sweet, you mm -hmm. know. Ice cream had lots of chocolate sauce, and the cake had loads of icing, and it was called Germain. So I had invited them all to come for dinner mm -hmm. with Leah Benson, and uh, her, her roommate was with her. And they grounded me. They wouldn't let me go. Mm -hmm. So I, had, I did have a bad cold, too, so that was the excuse. They put me in the infirmary and kept me uh, on the sheets, <laughs> <laughs> tightly bound sheets. <laughs> Mm. Would you go home at other times during the year other than, than Christmas time? Or? Um, yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, well, whenever we had vacation. Mm -hmm. You mean while I was at school mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh sure, Easter, we always had an Easter vacation. Mm -hmm. Can we go back some years now and sort of go back to, to real childhood mm -hmm. again? Okay. We, um, mm -hmm. Well, now we did a lot more traveling. You, you, you don't think maybe we stick to the traveling while oh, okay. we? Okay, okay. Because we, what did we do next? Let's see. No, I guess that was pretty bad because we still went to Columbia and then we went down to Florida, my sister and I. But, and this is when Aunt Max came in the picture. Mm -hmm. My brother got uh, at Christmas time when we came back after the um, being in Columbia mm -hmm. in the New York apartment. Uh, he got quite upset with Miss Green, and he said he'd never come home again if we didn't get rid of Miss Green. He brought a girl from England with him, and Miss Green did not like it. And um, so she made objections, and he, they had words. Well, of course, we stuck to our brother, but we didn't know what we were going to do, because then we met we were grounded again, do you see, because mm -hmm. we couldn't move around. And... Um, the Lasters had, by this time, moved back to their own home. They couldn't come. And we realized Uncle Will would insist on somebody. So that's when we went to Maxie Dunn and Uncle Jim and said, would you come out? They had mm -hmm. no children. Their son had died. And so they did. They enjoyed being there very much. And um, Maxie liked young people. Mm -hmm. and she didn't like them as babies, but she liked them as as late teenagers, mm -hmm. that's what we were, mm -hmm. and um, she enjoyed our bows more than we did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but it made it very nice to have them, and it really was 
and they were still with us when, um, well, then we went to Florida. Uncle Jim didn't go, but Aunt Max went with mm -hmm. us to Florida, and we stayed two, three months. Where were you staying in Florida? We got a little house. We rented a little house across from the Pan Coast, right on the beach. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of people that we knew in, down there at that time. Mm -hmm. A lot of the family were there. Some of them had uh, winter houses, mm -hmm. and young people were visiting them all the time. Mm -hmm. And so we had a very pleasant time. We were the age of falling in and out of love and drop of a hat, <laughs> and Charlie Babcock came down several times. He was really courting my sister uh -huh. at that time. And he stayed with us. We had a guest room. And um, I fell in love, and then he rejected me, and so I was very unhappy. And coming north, um, coming north afterwards, we went by the Charleston Gardens. So I got very inspired by gardens, and I someday was going to have a garden that was as beautiful as Charleston. So I, I haven't forgotten my ambition. <laughs> I have had several gardens, and the one in Musgrove is quite is quite something. And I did design it myself. Mm -hmm. And, but what um, an immediate result was, I went to work at Renolda Gardening. And um, I got a little piece of land assigned to me. It was right near the dam. It's now a forest of trees. Mm -hmm. But it's right below the dairy and right near the dam mm -hmm. of the lake. And um, I dug it up and I planted it and I watered it. And they didn't like my, I would do it about five o'clock in the morning before it was too hot. Mm -hmm. And then I'd come back and take a nap before lunch. And so they assigned somebody named Mr. Burney to me to, he was, um, his brother was one of the prominent lawyers. And uh, Mr. Burney was an alcoholic and worked as a god and he never spoke, he never talked. And uh, he was a perfectly nice person, but he just was not uh, reliable mm -hmm. alcoholically. If he was not drinking, he was all right. And uh, he would never tell me what I did wrong. And I watered that garden so hard that I, everything died. Everything. <laughs> and I think it was the meanest thing of him. He knew perfectly well. <laughs> but he wouldn't talk to me. What kinds of things were you growing? <coughs> was oh, I was just growing anything. I was growing uh, things that shouldn't have died, <laughs> like zinnias and peonies. <laughs> and <laughs> Oh dear, and I worked so hard on it. And then we went to Europe again. Maxie went, took us to Europe. And, um, and meanwhile, we'd had that, that was the spring of the um, Reynolds house party on Long Island that they were moving up to mm -hmm. when I met Henry Bagley. Mm -hmm. And so it was um, the next January that we were married. Mm -hmm. What was your first impression of him? Oh, he was most attractive. <laughs> oh, yes. So, now if you want to go way back. Okay. Um, let's see. I wanted to ask you about, um, um, like, when your mother married the second time, did she discuss with you at all the fact that she was going to get married again or... Um, was well, I'm sure we didn't feel left out, mm -hmm. but I don't remember any conversation. Mm -hmm. And her, um, her husband, her second husband, was um, the superintendent of Renolda School, mm -hmm. so we knew him quite well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dick had been um, very uh, much trial to Mother, because he did not like him. But I think he was jealous, you know? Because mm -hmm. we, uh, we two girls found him most attractive. Mm -hmm. So we were all for it. This was just delightful to have him in the family. <laughs> but Dick, Dick, Dick couldn't take it. It was, and he, very, very upsetting to mother. Mm -hmm. And he was very undisciplined in, in that he was going to do what he wanted to do, and you just never knew what was going to come out. I mean, mm -hmm. from the time he was sixteen, he was a lot of trouble to mother that way. But I think um, I know it would have been. Far better for him if my father had lived. Mm -hmm. And uh, was the was the death of your father particularly upsetting to Dick? Or I don't know. I, I never. Um, I don't think I ever 
have any uh, discussion mm-hmm. with him on it. Mm-hmm. And children are so self-centered, you know. And he was some. Well, he was he was my hero. Dick was a younger mm-hmm. sister, you know. Mm-hmm. This was a great hero. And Smith was my friend. I mean, he was younger than I. Mm-hmm. But you never felt that way about him because he was so um, intelligent and uh, he was so adult in his in his thinking. Mm-hmm. And there was only like about a year and a half difference. Uh, even less. Anyway. And uh, he was born in November and I was born in February, so there'd be time when it would be just one year. Mm-hmm. It was it was less than a, less than two years by November to about to February. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, he was a very strong character, Smith was. Mm-hmm. And um, well, to do the things he did in aviation before um, before he was 15, he was, well, about, he was 15 when he was a transport pilot license. Is that right? Yeah. I hadn't realized it. Yeah, he could, he, commercially he could fly. And um, he had a mechanical um, and Dick did too, to some extent. Both of them had a mechanical, mathematical type of mind. Mm-hmm. Inventive, to a mm-hmm. certain extent. Um, did you ever read Smith's log? I we came across a copy of that in the, lo- the public library, I think. Mm-hmm. And Patty, the research assistant, went through it and mm-hmm. she took some notes, which mm-hmm. I read. Well, that's quite, it's, I've got a copy here. In fact, I have a a photostatic copy. It's it's less wear and tear on the books. Mm-hmm. I don't have very many of. Mm-hmm. If you want to uh, to run through it, and yeah, maybe I mm-hmm. should. I I, th- I think it, it gives you a picture of the world. It's so different, you know. Mm-hmm. He was um, uh, oh this aviation thing. Well, you see, these it was all so new. Mm-hmm. It was just no. Well, there was no um, licensing of it. But that's why he was so young. To do these things, mm-hmm. it, it was like um, um, well, like automobiles. They don't let you run an automobile until you're 16, mm-hmm. but nobody had thought to say you have to have a license to uh-huh. fly a plane because it mm-hmm. just hadn't been around, and nobody had gotten around to make a law against it. So um, there were no licenses issued as pilots, and uh, one of the Wright brothers, I think it was Orville, um, decided that this was this was not good that people should take um an exam uh, should take um, a test mm-hmm. as a pilot so he himself on his own started licensing people mm-hmm. and he licensed a dick and smith both each of them had um, a license from from all the right is that right mm-hmm. and forsyth has has it now we gave it back to her. i think mary had it came out of renola's mm-hmm. and um it it was uh, it was like a private company, so it was like an av- it was like a recommendation. Mm-hmm. If I wanted to, somebody to fly me, I would just look for somebody that Orville had said was a good flyer. Mm-hmm. But it had nothing to do with the government. Mm-hmm. So where did Smith learn how to fly? Oh, in in Winston, in Winston. He, um, uh, McGinnis, Al, um, what's his first name? He's true some of the stories, but uh-huh. uh, he was a good um, flyer uh-huh. and. and and had your brother well, Dick learned there? Too? I think he learned from McGinnis. Mm-hmm. I think so. And of course, you know those planes were simpler to fly than what they mm-hmm. are today. Yeah, I mean, you were just it was like um, running my golf cart mm-hmm. kind of thing. So you flew with them sometimes. Or? Yeah, I was. My my sister started to take up flying. And she she got up to I I don't know whether she ever soloed but she was up to that mm-hmm. and um, I don't know I wasn't that ambitious on it I, I um, would rather fly with somebody mm-hmm. than but whenever my, my see they did a, uh, they got really a lot of practice by barnstorming or whatever you call it mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. they'd go around and have these uh, shows mm-hmm. these in some farmer's field that he'd move from. Um, mm-hmm. And I always went with him because I, I said nothing could happen to me if I was with him. And I was—I remember the time that he um, um, 
took his first parachute jump. Is that was Smith? Yeah, that was scary. Uh, to me, it was uh -huh. scary. I don't know what he thought. <laughs> and uh, But I was right out there watching him. Was that in Winston? It was it was outside of Winston. Some I can't remember exactly where we wasn't too far. I don't think mm -hmm. it was something like going up to um, oh Mount Airy, but it wasn't Mount Airy. Mm -hmm. It was it was a flat field. And I don't remember. We went very d any distance to get there. I was reading in um, I think it was one of the letters that. Smith probably dictated to Bum to send to your father, and he talked about how um, there was apparently had a little friend named Prince, who I got the feeling was maybe Mammy Lula's son. What did you say now? He had a. He was talking about how Prince had gone home. But he had, was Prince, perhaps um, one Prince. of the black children on the place. He said something like Prince had gone with Mammy Lula, and something about the. He bet the geese were happy. He was he was sad, but he bet the geese were happy. And I got the feeling that Prince must have um, a dog, Prince. Well, maybe it was. Well, I think it must be a horse. My father had um, a pair of horses that that um, drove him around, and he and mother. Uh huh. One was named Prince, the other Albert. Uh huh. So would Prince have gone home with Mammy um, Lula? Maybe. She was the nurse. Uh huh. She was the um, the Maybe nurse before Lizzie, the, and you know he and the in the same letter it might have been Prince and Albert both, and he said something about that that he was he was sad. Maybe they took her home. Maybe they sad. drove her home, Mammy Lulu. <laughs> <laughs> I have those carriages. I have that carriage, the one they used in in um, Winston. Uh huh. The rather formal one. It's called I think it's called a Victoria, and I have it down in Georgia. Huh. Do you still use it just to ride around? Well, I um, it was at Sampolo. Dick had it at Sampolo, and then his after he died, his wife gave it to me. And um, also, Dick had collected a, a coach, um, the kind that went really from town to town, mm -hmm. with a lot of trunk space. And um, I'm sorry, but it has no fringe anymore. It, and they were in pretty bad condition. I got them all fixed up, and I'm, I have a carriage house, and I put them in there. And I was going to um, rent two horses to come and stay whenever I'm down there. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't work up a deal with the local uh, stable. They uh, didn't want, they didn't have any horse that was harness trained. And I said, well, you get a pair of horses that are harness trained and I'll loan you the carriage to, to ride your customers around uh -huh. in. But um, that didn't seem to appeal to him. <laughs> he thought I ought to buy the horses and then pay him a couple of hundred dollars rent <laughs> and boarding boarding uh -huh. the horses with him or else um, something like that so we never worked it out but they we have the garden open for tours of Christ Church mm -hmm. and uh, I always open the carriage door and carriage house door and let them admire it mm -hmm. I've got some uh, you'll come across some mm -hmm. pictures of it it's a beautiful um I put them in perfect condition they and it has the harness that, uh, it has my father's initials on it, RJR, mm -hmm. in silver, harness. Um, now, I guess you can remember pretty vividly when your mother died. Mm -hmm. um, can you remember, did, did, at that time, did you just feel, how did you feel? Did you feel abandoned or scared or did you... Did you just have, did you just know that somebody would be there to to sort of take care of you like she had been a mother? Or? Well, I don't remember being any scared and, and nothing scared about it. I don't know if she didn't prepare us pretty well. You see, they didn't, uh, the doctors did not want her to have another baby. And she had one little Johnson child mm -hmm. uh, two years before, a little girl who did not live there long. Mm -hmm but she was born at the Plaza Hotel. Was, I think she was only about um, a six or seven month old baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember her, I remember alive, the mm -hmm. little thing. And um, I don't, Bum was with her. And so she, mother was back in New York 
to have the second baby too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we all knew that mother, well, we see we, there were times, mother had this heart attack occasionally. So we all knew to protect mother in that way. We didn't feel that she was um, securely in life. Mm -hmm. well, it's not a very good expression, but that she was um, healthy. Mm -hmm. She was tender. She was something you had to look after. Mm -hmm. And um, we couldn't have been forewarned to some extent, but I, I think we were a little bit. Mm -hmm. That she, we knew she was going through a dangerous time because she was having another baby. Mm -hmm. But then the baby was four days old, so we thought everything was mm -hmm. fine. And she died. I mean, today she wouldn't have died. Mm -hmm. It was an embolism. And uh, they get you get that's why they get you up so quickly now after an operation because you they don't have um, embolism as a blood clot mm -hmm. and uh, if you are moving around uh, your blood is moving and circulating and you don't have a, the clot mm -hmm. it's less likely and in our day when I had children and mother we were supposed to be really flat in bed until for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they were always very careful to get you up very slowly and everything mm -hmm. like that. And you think they're home in three days now, mm -hmm. aren't they? Just about. <laughs> mm -hmm. And much healthier. No clots, no embolism. Did, when your mother was pregnant in that day, did did women try to hide their pregnancy by the... Was it something Well, they that tried to dress, you know, to... Not to um, flaunt it mm -hmm. appropriately, but I don't think that they. Uh, it wasn't that they were embarrassed over. I don't think so. Over being pregnant, mm -hmm. you just wanted to look your best, and you didn't think you did when you stuck mm -hmm. out that far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is it, and this is Miss Vandenberg. Mm -hmm. with that, um, mm -hmm. With and this is her wedding dress, and we could not get that. I tried to get that back for Renola, but um, Ed, when he married, his wife wore this. Huh. And I called her. She, they're divorced, but I called her, and she said that she didn't think that she kept the pieces together, huh. and said she took it and she remade it for herself, but she didn't keep it this way mm -hmm. anyway. But it was a very pretty dress. It wasn't exactly a wedding dress, but it was. A, I always think these were the best pictures. I always love these pictures of Mother. Mm -hmm. Why does it look the... B yeah, it's a long dress, but mm -hmm. then... You see, I think she looks almost pregnant there, but she wasn't. <laughs> but I think it's the waistband being way down mm -hmm. on your hip. Mm -hmm. Did um did Mr. Johnston stay at Renolda after your mother died? Or? No, and... Um, his his mother was living in the house right of Coliseum Drive hits Renolda Road. Mm -hmm. The house is right on the corner on the on the Coliseum side of the corner. Mm -hmm. That was his home and uh, or her home. Mm -hmm. And he moved in there. And I think that um, well, Uncle Will and the Lasters weren't very nice to him, and they kind of tried to shove him out. He was out. Actually, he was the guardian with Uncle mm -hmm. Will. And um, Mother had had a battle with Uncle Will because she had tried to get Ed Johnston into the tobacco company. So Mother had bought up all the A stock, which was the voting stock that she could get hold of, huh. trying to, to take charge, and Uncle Will defeated her. So he wasn't having anything to do with it, which is too bad. It, um, Ed Johnston, his father was a professor at Davidson, and uh, he, as I said, was out mm -hmm. taught school. And he was a nice person, his, his mother was. Uh, he was a weak character. But well, he later married a very uh, a prominent uh, Baltimore girl, and they had two daughters. And Ed was more or less brought up by his paternal grandmother. Mm -hmm. And um, I tried to keep in touch with him, but it was very hard to do. And um, recently I found that um, he kind of feels that the family didn't pay any attention to him. But you know, if you um, 
Well, I remember I used to send him a birthday, a Christmas gift each time, and never got any thanks, so you finally get so you don't. <laughs> but it takes some adult to tell him to thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, the, the thing that really threw me off of him was because when my sister died, he very nicely came down. He came down from Baltimore. And I was kind of arranging things as, as my wont. And um, I made sure that he was in, not slighted, that he was in the, in the limousine with me mm -hmm. because we had all the Babcocks ahead of us, mm -hmm. of course. But in my limousine, I had Aunt Max and Ed Johnston and some of my children. Mm -hmm. And um, after the funeral, we went back out to Renola. Everybody met, the family all met out there. And I was talking to um, one of the cousins-in-law, Shirley Staley, and he came up to and up to us, and he asked Shirley. He said, "Now, I get you a little mixed up. Now, were you Mary's sister?" I know. Well, I just walked away. You see, and um, I don't know who he thought I was. So anyway, I kind of gave up mm -hmm. on it, and then I tried to get him back into. Well, I I, met, I liked his wife, and she was quite very helpful. I would I would write her, and she'd mm -hmm. keep me up with it. He had four children; they had four children. And um, oh, I remember one time I started out for I was motoring south, and they had a house on on Eastern Point, um, Eastern Shore of Maryland. Mm -hmm. And I called up and said, I'm going to pass through there. May I come by? And she said, come ahead. But he didn't appear, huh. you see. But this was before I knew there was any feeling on his side that he was neglected, before I knew mm -hmm. any of this other. So I kept, I kept in touch with him, but um, he's now remarried, and uh, I wrote him trying to interest him in the Reynolds homestead a little bit, and he just would Oh, Renolda. I tried to interest mm -hmm. him in Renolda. The time I made a challenge gift to Renolda, mm -hmm. he said he'd never been part of the family, and he was not. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he was the owner, a sixth owner of that house, you see. Is that right? And sure, because when Mother died, she left the house to we four children, mm -hmm. and her husband, Ed Johnston, and her child, Ed Johnston, mm -hmm. Jr. So there were six owners of Renolda. And that's why, um, well, the Babcocks had to buy it from all of mm -hmm. us. There was some, um, and it was so very surprising to me that Mary wanted it. I thought Dick was going to buy it. He did? Mm -hmm. And I didn't go to the meeting because I was. I don't know whether I was pregnant or had a bad cold or what, but anyway, I didn't go. And I just, my husband was went, and I told him, oh, you can sell to any of my family. be all right with me. And um, so he did. But I, I did say, I want, there's certain things I want out of the house. And um, I named them. There were three things. I wanted a set of Shakespeare that I had been reading as a child, loved. I wanted the dining room chairs, and I wanted the tea service. And um, I'm not sure. I don't think he ever got that across, because later, if he had, I think my oh, and I wanted to have uh, half the costumes. I wanted half mm -hmm. of those. And because anyway, my sister said I was trying to take everything. After she bought it. So she got very angry with me. And I said, well, that was my bargain. I mean, my deal was mm -hmm. I'd sell it if I had those things. Well, uh, that was sort of in January, I think. Along come February. Um, something happened. There's something, somebody we knew mm -hmm. down there, and I heard about it, so I telephoned my sister and I, she was living in Greenwich then. Mm -hmm. And I told her this gossip. Mm -hmm. 
and we chatted about the gossip for quite a while and then she said oh I forgot I'm not speaking to you anymore and I said you aren't what about I didn't laugh though because it wasn't that uh -huh. <laughs> and she said well you just you know then it was went back to the things I wanted at Renona so I said well you just let me know when you are speaking to me and um, I didn't get them but she gave me the tea service for Christmas and her husband kept giving me Shakespeare sets and I didn't like any of them and I kept saying no you can take that back I don't want it finally I relieved him by accepting one and um, I'm glad I didn't get the chairs <laughs> <laughs> and families can fight over such ridiculous things but uh, finally in about I guess it took us about a month and some other gossip came <laughs> up and and uh, we never mentioned it again you see mm -hmm. we got back together because we were quite close mm -hmm. actually we were quite close originally because of um, with the help of Miss Green because we had somebody we were both against <laughs> you see mm -hmm. and I always said if I had two children that didn't get along together I'd send them off with somebody <laughs> they'd hate and they'd be fine <laughs> uh, and actually I like Miss I, as I grew up after I was married I like Miss Green mm -hmm. but I'm not as, as a chaperone <laughs> as a person she was she was very nice mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. We we really were, could. We got some more. There's um, one thing I want to ask you is you said that um, sort of teasingly, teasingly seriously that um, sort of Bum was sort of the the boss of the mm -hmm. household and she would boss your mother. But when it came down between like you, your mother, and your father. Was there a boss there, or what was sort of the... the I think division? mother was the boss in the house. <laughs> um, I think my father enjoyed us. He, he was, he was that, um, we were his entertainment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she, she handled the discipline. Mm -hmm. And also, I think my mother was the one that really built Renola. I don't think my father had too much mm -hmm. to do with it. This was her, um, what she loved doing, and this was something that pleased her and go ahead Catherine you knew what you wanted mm -hmm. what what kind how would you be disciplined as children were there ever physical spankings or was it usually well, I never it? got one but uh, that's because I didn't deserve one of course <laughs> 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 but uh, uh, my brothers were mm -hmm. she, she'd take the whip to them and I know I would say that this was after my father died that I remember these mm -hmm. things but I used to just cringe.